This is an audio amplifier. And this is its proposed circuit for providing a fairly powerful and economical audio output. I'm talking about the TDA2822, which is a 1 watt audio amplifier. However, in this situation, we are not going to use it as an audio amplifier, but rather we will use it for another project. This project involves orienting a solar panel directly toward the center of the sun to obtain more power from the solar panel's outputs. Now you might be wondering, how does an audio amplifier work as a solar tracker? We'll analyze all of this throughout the video so you can understand how this works. But before that, let's confirm that the TDA2822 is an audio amplifier. As you've just seen, it is indeed an audio amplifier. However, we're going to use it as a solar tracker, so stay until the end of the video to understand how it works. So let's begin. Before assembling the circuit, let's test the operation of this component. The LDR is a light-dependent resistor whose value changes depending on the amount of light falling on its surface. For this, we'll use a multimeter on the 200 kilom scale or higher. Remember that the multimeter has no polarity. We have a reading of 15 kilohms. If we shade it slightly, you can see that the resistance increases. It even goes over 200 kilohms. We increase the scale and shade it again. Now we have more than one megaohm. And we're up to more than two megaohms. This way, the LDR will be able to position our solar panel toward the sunlight. With that understood, let's move on to the circuit.
Okay, our solar tracker is ready. As you can see, it's already assembled here, along with the battery and the LDRs on the sides. All that's left is to test it. But before that, a little theory. Here we have the TDA2822, where we can see that there are two operational amplifiers. And as you may recall, an operational amplifier can also work as a comparator. And that's exactly how it's working this time. We see two 10 kilohm resistors of the same value connected in series. These resistors are used to divide the 5 volt voltage into two equal parts of 2.5 volts. That is, we have 2.5 volts at this point relative to the negative. This voltage is distributed to pins 5 and 7 of the integrated circuit and is used to compare the signals delivered by the LDRs. As we have seen, the LDR can vary its resistance depending on the light it receives. Therefore, if LDR2 receives more light, its resistance will be lower, and the voltage at that point will also be lower than that of LDR1. Let's assume we have 2 volts here. This voltage will be distributed across pins 6 and 8. So, let's see how the two comparators work. In the first comparator, we can see that we have 2.5 volts at pin 7, which is much higher than 2 volts. Therefore, at the output, we will have a positive polarity. In the second comparator, we can see that 2.5 volts is greater than 2 volts. Therefore, at the output, we'll have negative polarity, causing the motor to rotate in one direction. Now, what happens if LDR1 receives more light than LDR2? Well, at LDR2, there will be more voltage. Assuming we have 3 volts here, those 3 volts will pass to pin 8 and pin 6. In the first comparator, we can see that 3 volts is greater than 2.5. Therefore, at the output, we'll have negative polarity. In the second comparator, we can see that 3 volts is greater than 2.5. Therefore, at the output, we'll have positive polarity, causing the motor to rotate in the opposite direction. That's how our circuit would work. Now that we know how our circuit works, let's see it in practice. Alright, guys, as you just saw, our solar tracker is working correctly, as you just saw. Well, that's how the video would end. However, the solar tracker can only use a small motor like the one I'm using. But if you'd like me to talk about the power stage so you can use much larger motors, then write it in the comments. And that's how the video would end. Now, don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.